So all of a sudden I can't split out the stream chat and I don't know why. So I'm sitting there, you can hear me you can hear me in the background. How do Jake Batman. Okay, cool. Jake Batman, what how do I split this out? Or is that like a Chrome only function? Maybe it's because I'm doing it in Firefox that it's not working. Let's try it in um your brother just got out of prison. Pop you out. Have to be careful about it. Why is there no pop-out on Firefox? That's so weird. Oh, there you go. It's just hidden right in the middle. Okay, it exists. It's a real thing. All right, let's set this up. All right, so I have two monitors now. <laughs> it's so much better. Hey, Ryan. Um, it's so much better with two monitors because I can be, my OBS is over here, my chats are over here, and right in the middle is uh, you all, my programming friends. So where we ended yesterday was we had built our first ever Laravel Nova card. And by we, I mean, like, it literally was my first one ever, too. We all just kind of figured it out together. Hey, be pwned. Um, so... Yeah, thanks. I um, hacked that together in Photoshop, inspired by some that I found online. Uh, I don't have the normal one that I use because it's on my laptop. This is my first time streaming from my iMac, but that's the one he's talking about. Um, I can Photoshop. Okay, so I just spun up a new Laravel app called Uses Nova, and then uh, I've got Nova pulled down. And so what I was going to do is. Uh, use this as an example to show what it looks like to pull Nova in to a Nova app and then to pull a package in. So I figured then we would actually go build from there. What's up? Uh, Amadeus reminds me of the first time I streamed um, View and uh, the guy who wrote View was helping with answers and his his name is like Uxie and so um, I was like, thanks, Uxie, not realizing I was talking to the guy who actually wrote the framework that I was working in. What I am doing right now is I am doing two things. One, I'm going to set up a Laravel application to import Nova for everybody to see what that process looks like. And then two, we're going to continue work on a Nova package that we started building last night. So the way you do it here is you go to your composer.json, and there's basically a way to do a path require. So let's just go to docs. No. Nova.laravel.com and slash docs. And we'll just walk through installation. And so basically what it does is if you've ever added a custom repository before, um, usually you'd be used to adding this custom repository by means of um, uh, GitHub repo. But one of the things you can also do is you can add a custom repository that is a local path. And so what we're doing here is saying, can be a custom repository and look in the directory that is basically like same directory as where we are, but in Nova. So then you come in here and then you add Laravel slash Nova. Um, and I think what he actually recommends you doing is just asterisk. Um, and yep, asterisk. And then you just run composer update. So we're going to do composer update. And let's go pull up our. Um, package, which is Nova something. Nova package discovery, I think it was what it was called. Great. So this is the package we were working on yesterday. Um, somebody, Jake Bathman is my Twitch helper, and he's going to teach me one day how to get this chat uh, permanently up, so I can just always see it. So laggy. Uh, Twitch is always laggy. I don't know if there's anything other than that that you're talking about. Um, so, okay. So this is the card. So we're going to want to install this card, which is also something we've never done before. Uh, okay, Laravel Nova could be found in any could not be found in any version. All uh, right. There, chat relay. See, it has a name and everything. I wonder whether this URL is supposed to be dot dot slash Nova. I kind of think no, because that wouldn't be in the instru instru installation instructions that way. Um, but maybe that's a thing that. 
the net directory. Oh, within your application's redirecting. Yeah, so I'm doing it one subdirectory up. I don't know if that's actually a bad thing. Hey, Lee, uh, you can use the dashboard on your phone to watch chat and stats. Well, I actually have multiple directories here. I wonder if one thing that I could do is um, I can show the chat on my second screen and here so that even when y'all are hidden from the stream, um, I can still see it uh, on my um, other monitor. We'll see if that comes up. Okay, um, so what were we doing? All right, so that worked. So I need to do dot dot slash Nova because we were putting it not in a subdirectory, but in the same uh, general area. So at this point, we now should be at the point, hey, Blackborn 1911. Uh, we should not be to the point where um, that application um, uh, has Nova in it. That application that I just made doesn't have a dash, uh, database right now. So I'm going to pause y'all real quick, and I'm going to go. I made a keyboard shortcut for that, but I can't remember what it was. <laughs> um, Foxpat says, great job in Nova packages. Thank you so much. Uh, we worked really hard on that. Um, and we're still working really hard on it. So I'm going to go to my local database. I'm going to make a new database called Uses Nova. Um, and then I'll unpause you all. Okay. And then let's go over to our Uses Nova.env. And I think I actually made it Uses underscore Nova. I used Lambo to make this, so I have all these things kind of set up by default. And let's do a migrate. So we have users. Oops. This is not the one we actually need to be in right here. So let's do Argon Migrate. And so now we have this Laravel app uses Nova. We edited the composer.json to add Nova in. I'm putting it not in a subdirectory, but in a uh, child. I don't know if that's actually going to break things. Let's see. I don't think it'll break anything. Um, we migrated it. Um, and you can see action events. I think that's Nova. What we haven't done actually yet is Artisan Nova install. Um, so I'm surprised to see action events, but maybe that's a new Laravel 5.6 or 5.7 thing, not a uh, Nova thing. All right. Uh, no, don't paste these two. Um, okay. I'm My brain is a lot of different spaces right now. And I have a meeting at 11. So please tell me you're not using Windows Keyboard. No, this is a advantage to Kinesis monster uh, because I have um, my wrist issues. And so this is the way for... Um, action events is another thing. Thanks, Foxpat. This is a way for my wrists to actually keep working. Also, if you notice that I'm like hot and sweaty, the heat is broken, or the air conditioning is broken in my office. I have a fan permanently pointed on me, but then y'all wouldn't be able to hear. So this is the, the, the pain that I'm going through just because of uh, you wonderful human beings. Okay. So you, it takes a while to get used to it because the layout's very weird, but... Um, that's why I'm actually, you'll see me make a lot of typos, a lot more typos than I used to, and it's because uh, getting used to this keyboard. Okay, so uses Nova as an app. We just made a users thing. So let's go to uses nova.test slash uh, Nova, and let's see if it lets us log in. So it shouldn't work in at all. Um, and so, hey, Marcel. So what we're going to do is art Nova user, and then we're going to say Matt Stauffer, my password. Oop, I think I typed my password wrong. <laughs> we might be testing the password uh, field soon. Yep, I totally, totally mistyped that. Um, let's try that again. P A S S W O R D. Enter. Go team. Okay, so now we're in Nova. So let's say Matt Mangoni. So what the first thing we do is we pull in our card here. But unlike last time, we didn't bring in this card ourselves. So the question here would be, what does it look like to install somebody else's card um, normally? So if you, one of the things that I did was I actually put my card up on packages, but I had not actually put up installation instructions. And if you watched yesterday, what you saw was Rather than figuring out all these things on my own, which would waste a lot of time, I looked to figure out the people who have been coding on these for the last couple of days and said, well, what kind of instructions do they have? So let's find another card. This is the Nova custom dashboard card and look at their installation instructions and just grab those. Oh, uh, dude, so this guy right here built a uh, package discovery tool for Laravel in like the earliest, earliest days. Um, and it was totally a baller. Okay. So installation is composer require the thing. So I'm actually going to go here and I'm just going to totally yoink this right here. Um, 
And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to his GitHub repo. Um, it's okay because he's watching this stream right now. Um, and actually, I'm going to view it raw. Um, I've got to go to installation right here. And then oops, right there. Okay. So we're going to first add it to ours, and then we're going to actually try it. All right, you can install the package in Laravel that uses Nova via Composer. Those are required Titan Co. Nova package discovery. Also, by the way, this package is not package discovery in terms of like service provider discovery. This is, hey, novapackages.com has an API to show you uh, recent and popular packages. We're going to put in a little card so you can know what the new and hot packages are. There's a much more robust tool doing this sort of work that Marcel's working on. Um, but uh, this is just going to be like a super, super simple one. Next up, you must uh, register the card with Nova. It's typically done the cards method, Nova service provider, and blah, 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 cards, new, Titan Co. Uh, Nova package discovery, I'm guessing is what this is going to be. And then the actual thing is also probably called Nova package discovery. But let's double check. So if we go, oops, let's go to our Source. It's called Titan Co. Nova Package Discovery. Nova Package Discovery. Great. So when we register it, that's going to be the thing to do. Add installation instructions to read me. And then I think it's Marcel. Let's see. I don't think it's M plus yet, but I could be wrong. That might be M. you got to give credit to people. Um, okay, installation. So now let's go follow our installation requirements. So the one problem with this is we're not going to be make, able to make changes to it uh, live like this. Um, so I guess the biggest question is what's the best way to pull down your existing package and make changes on it. So like doing active development. Because what we could do, you know, actually, let's just install it first. Um, all right, let's install it first and then go back and actually install it in a way where we can do some work on it. Because this is all kind of just like, what does it look like to install Nova? What does it look like to install a Nova package? Yeah, Simlinks. The question is Simlinks where? And my guess is what we're going to do is we're going to make a package so that it scaffolds all of the places where it expects the symlinks to be. And then we're going to delete that package and put our package there instead um, so that we know the, the Nova expected place for those symlinks to happen, basically. All right, so we did that. And then the next one was go to the Nova service provider and basically say new uh, Nova package discovery, I think is what it was. And does it exist? It does. OK, great. Oh yeah, we could do that as well. Do that same path repository. Um, all right, so let's see if we get our card in there. We don't get our card in there. Uh, what? Let's drop the help one and see what did we need to, is there anything we need to do to register this Nova package discovery card? Because last time we didn't. All we had to do was just add it to the Nova service provider. Um, so what am I missing? Okay, Composer required it, yes. And then register the card with Nova and the cards method in Nova's server provider. Yep. And expect it to show up in the dashboard, but it doesn't. Okay, well, I'm going to go do that sim linking thing, and hopefully at some point one of y'all are going to point out the fact that I made some totally bonehead. Um, default get ignore when you create a new Nova that has the dist folder included, so that's ignored. So does that mean that we need to do something to make that? Do we need to do something when we install it? To, or is that broken? And should we have unignored that ourselves? We can go look at yours. See, just learn from each other. Um, beyond code. Does yours have dist in it? I assume it does. I have the dist. Yeah, interest. So why is it in the get ignore? That sounds like a bad way to do things. OK, 
Well, that's helpful. So it sounds like one of the things we need to do, at least in the current state, is when you're building one of these, um, you need to update your... The moment it's generated, it's not actually in a way that's distributable. And so the first thing you need to do is... Um, you need to delete the dist from getting more, and then is there not a dist folder here? Oh, because this is brand new. So there is no dist folder because this is not the computer I originally wrote this on. I assume that they all just come out of the npm install and npm print production um, process, but we'll see. Oof, y'all, it's hot in here. Okay, so meanwhile, we now have it here. Actually, you know what I want to do? I'm going to fix it here and then push it up and then Composer update it before we actually start to do any work on it. All right, error, unexpected token name package, card.js from Uglify.js. Okay. This is our first time doing it in production, so that might be part of the problem. It might just be something. Um, so we might just not worry about production right now because we got 38 minutes. Hate to be that person, but why are you using space? Oh, what are you using? <laughs> uh, life hacker spaces. In doc. I know I typoed there. Like I said, y'all, this new keyboard is killing me, and it's not even that new. Just go to this. Easily add spaces to your Mac style. That's amazing. Okay, so let's just try a dev. Meanwhile, I'll go to app.js and see if I can figure out what's going on there. Unexpected token name package. Yeah, have that JS. Um, oh, was it card that JS? Bitta. Bitta. Nope. I don't see any unexpected anything here. But it didn't error out on dev, so somebody can maybe take a note in their brains that we need to figure out why it didn't work in prod. So what we're going to say here is just we're going to leave it in dev, and we're going to basically say add a dist folder. And then we're going to go make that a new release. Um, I don't know what my best release schedule is here, so I'm just, I'm just incrementing my O dots uh, until it's actually something useful. I probably should be doing this those as like O.2.1 kind of thing. But I'm not smart enough to really understand these things. So actually, we're going to have some little stuff to come up with, so JSON API story. Awesome. I love it. Um, OK, so that should be picked up in Packagist. And so I should be able to go Composer update now, hopefully. And then that, our vendor should then have disk. So let's go over to our uses Nova vendor, Titan Co, Nova package discovery. Um, so we're, what we want is for the Composer update to bring in a dist folder there. It didn't, though. So does that mean Packages hasn't updated yet? Um, D0.3. Hmm. Why is O.3? Do we not have a dist folder in there? Did I actually check? Okay, we've got a dist folder. Okay, give Composer a second. But it's in packages, so shouldn't, shouldn't um, uh, package discovery. Yep, we're still getting 0.2. Interesting. What's my constraint on that? That might have been a part of the problem, actually. Um, I think I can go from 0.2 instead of 0.2.0, and then that'll let me get up to 0.3. Or not. That would make sense. It's cached since it pulled what the latest version was very recently. Uh, Marcel, what would I do without you?
Oof. Too hot. Composer has been the hard part of this Nova Dev story. Yeah, for sure. Granted, yesterday we didn't do anything with Composer, so it's really it's the hardest part for Composer today, or for today, because literally today the hope is making sure that you can install it correctly for Composer. As soon as we're done with that, we'll go back to symlinking it and then actually trying to um, update the code a little bit more. My hope. No. That's so, how are we do it? Is that constraint wrong? Package discovery. We're still going to not O.2. You know what? Let's just. Um, Let's just make it 0.3 and just see where that takes us. Yeah, I probably should. Why not? Oh, look, 0.3 worked. Good thinking, V. Mitchell. Vince. Yeah, okay. So this is what we're doing. So this folder exists. So thank you, Marcel. That was the fix. Uh, it wasn't showing up. So we have it working. So now let's actually pull it back out of there. Or actually, no, we'll just make it a, a repository. And we're going to call path as a Nova package discovery. And so hopefully, when we compose our update, it will pull from here. And then um, when we make a change here, it'll make the change there. And let's just go take a look to Nova package discovery to make sure it's changes are propagating. Let's go make some changes to our JavaScript component. Um, recent packages. It's always my favorite is to add exclamation points to things and so just see what happens. Uh, where would it be? It would be right here. If it's symlink correctly, it would be right there. I'm wondering if I need to vendor Titan Co. Nova. Yeah, I wonder how to do that and then it'll pull the path version of it correctly. Mm hmm. Reese package is great. And then if we make a double exclamation point, oops. I should be able to count. Okay, great. So the changes we were making are now coming in. We showed that we could correctly install it via packages, but now we're back to working with our Synlink version. The thing we worked on yesterday was trying to get it not to be full width and still not be constrained to 150 pixel height. I need to reach out to David Hemphill to ask him the best way to do that. Um, I'm actually going to do that real quick just in case he's online. So let me. If, let me attempt to do that. Switching your mouse between normal size screens and then like super, super, super tiny for um, for streaming screens is a little bit crazy at times. Um, okay, so I'm going to go to uh, David Hemphill. Real quick Nova question. What's the best way to set size on a card? Or is it even setable? getting stuck with this 150 pixel height restraint. Okay, cool. So let's pull you all back on the scene and look at what it is that we're going to work out, work on. So one of the things we wanted to do was get actual popular packages, but that requires me to go add that to novapackages.com. That's what we're working about right now. One of the things we can do is we can format this right here. Um, don't forget to give Samantha fries. Catch you again. Yeah, <laughs> see you later. Um, form, we need to format this date. Um, I'd really like for us to kind of trim it maybe down to like a couple packages um, so it can just be a nice little slim thing. And I think I kind of want to do something where there's like a view component where there's like a button on either side. All those aren't really Nova related though. All those are just kind of programming, which we could just kind of do that programming there. Hey, TJ. Um, we could just do this programming there, but I would love to see if there's anything else. Um, oh, card size equals large. Uh, it might. Hi, Jason Varga. Um, card size equals large. Well, that's the thing. The, the, uh, I, oh, if we didn't try that yesterday, I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> Let's go to the card service provider. And yeah, if I know it wasn't was card, it was um, Nova package discovery. But that's what streaming's like. You try everything except for the one that's the obvious one. Well, that didn't do something, right? All right. Oof. Let's go in here. Like that. All right. Uh, expected comma. What did I break and where? Yeah. 
Y'all view people, I never know whether I'm supposed to put that thing in front of it or not. Okay. Oh, thanks. Yeah, this new office is totally garbage from here over, um, but you can't tell <laughs> because uh, webcams are magical. Okay. No colon, you want the little large thing. That's what I thought. Yeah, so size equals large. So what is this error that we're getting here? Error, un, uncaught error, module build fail, syntax error, 49, but it's 49 where? That's the problem. These friggin' stack traces are impossible to figure out where the actual problem happened. Um, now we'll lift off, call this 3f.js. Where's, where's, like, where's the actual error happening to your stack trace. If the error is being thrown in here, cool. Height is hard coded right now, says David Hemphill. So that's it. Check terminal. Oh, AR packages equals response.data. I must have typoed when I was clicking around this. Hey, look at that. I accidentally deleted a whole bunch of stuff. Good cat catch, Zach Smash. I normally would have noticed that, but I have my notifications turned off, so I'm not getting notified when we get terminal errors. Yeah, stack traces are the worst. They're so annoying. All right, so let's go back to this and size equals large. I really hope this is the fix for it, but uh, from what I heard from David Hemphill, that's probably not the case. Uh, Twitch streamer, your room is so clean. Twitch, is yeah, exactly, 100%. Yeah, that didn't work, unfortunately. So this is our concern here. So either we make a, a user interface that can be crammed into this tiny little card, or we make it uh, very large. Um, so, and I can't imagine a way to make the app that we're, with the card that we're building right now fit in here. I just, I don't think so. So I think it's gonna have to be a thing. Uh, I'm gonna send a screenshot of this over to um, Penpel. For this one, my best bet is to just use full width, yeah? Just see if there's another kind of paradigm they have for how to have things that are, um, you know, taller than the 150 pixels. Okay. Meanwhile, probably so, he says. I'm dissatisfied with that answer, but uh, that's what it's going to have to be for now. Okay. So if you need any height out of your card, it needs to be, um, at least at the moment, it needs to be, um, needs to be full width. Hey, beat dog, homie G one two three. Um, oh, you know what? I thought there was going to be a meeting in 11 minutes. At 11, it might not have time. Yeah, honestly. Um, yeah, well, it's not quite actually that, Marcel, because there's a test. Oh, you mean we could just skip the card and actually just build? That's an interesting idea. Don't use the card um, uh, thing at all. But doesn't it get like the wrappers and everything? I thought it got wrappers. Maybe it doesn't use wrappers. Let's just try it. Div. <laughs> div and card and then we make the width one third that didn't work No, we're still getting our card in our card panel there. Did I, am I editing the wrong thing here or is that div just getting converted to a card anyway? <laughs> Look at this, you do div class equals card test, it converts it to a, um, it's still doing this card panel thing anyway. Use flex, make contact scroll. Yeah, I thought about that, but 150, making anything scroll within here just seems like it's gonna be tough. So, and I'm sure that you can't do something like this, uh, you know, height, you know, 500 pixels. That would be just too easy. Bam! <laughs> well, the problem is when you do this, you're being a bad player in a system that's expecting things to move and flow around each other certain ways. And so by making it a manual height, I'm almost guaranteeing that it's gonna break according to somebody else. Um, that's, that's my gut. My gut is that, I mean, obviously I have the ability to modify the height, but I don't think it's going to play nicely with others if I do that. So let's see if we probably, so bad Matt, I'm guessing, 
David, are you saying that because you're watching and noticing me break things? Oh, boy. Um, okay. So, for now, I'm just going to play nicely with others. I'm going to pull this off. We're going to convert this back to a card. <laughs> David's watching me break things. So, David, since you're watching, there's the one note there is that uh, some guidance on what how these cards are supposed to, what it looks like for a card to play nicely in this ecosystem, I think would be really helpful. Um, it'd be cool for us to be able to just know, like, am I breaking things if I make this taller? Is there a paradigm for how to do this? Yada, yada, yada. I understand that all needs to come, but at this point it's a little confusing because I don't really like this as a full width thing, but obviously I don't want to just make it 500 pixels wide. So we're just going to make it full, full size for now. Um, so... Um, Big question to me is someone ships a card with large that's what I'm saying. I think that if somebody ships a card with a larger height, it's gonna break it for everybody else, which is why I'm not gonna do it. Um, so yeah, so let's um let's just clean this up a little bit. We can't do any popular packages right now. Uh, we can clean up the recent packages. Let's say if we had twenty or fourteen minutes. Wait, twenty-four minutes, um, twenty-three minutes. Let's clean up the date and then let's make a quick thing. Hey David. Let's make a quick thing where it's like a tab switcher, where there's a tab for recent and a tab for popular. All right. Oh, and then I guess I need to add this as well. Add the novapackages.com URL, because I'd rather link to the novapackages.com URL rather than just the original GitHub uh, URL. So, okay. How is card panel being magically applied? There's a whole ton of stuff. If you basically just go uh, grep for card-panel, you'll see stuff where it's, um, well, it's not in this, but it's in Nova, where it checks whether the width is a certain thing, and it basically applies card panel to one-third width and maybe two-third widths, but not to full width. Um, so, okay. Uh, and if there are any other ideas you all have for, like, this is what we should do to make this package actually something I would put on my, um, my thing, I would love to hear that. I'm not a designer, so design only on ideas or features that you should have or something like that. Um, interestingly, I thought for sure that I fixed this to have a better line height. Um, but it's not here. You know what? I fixed it on my local machine and never, um, uh, never pushed it up, I guess. I'm going to fix up that letting. There you go. Breathe better. Um, drop those things. And then, okay. So Keith Damiani showed me a thing that was not moment.js, it was a lot smaller, and it just converted um, uh, dates. Do any of y'all know what that is? So I can not avoid pulling in moment. Um, MX Browns. I think they're Browns. Advantage to Kinesis switches. Oh, moment's global? Well, then we'll just moment. Okay. What switches does it have? I'm not sure what Luxon means. Yep, Browns. Man, those good years. Okay, um, so what I want to do is parse um, moment. Um, and you know what? We actually have another package where somebody did this already. And so I'm just going to go copy that. Excuse me for just a second while I copy that, because it's going to be way faster than writing. Sorry, I'm always curious about what apps other developers use. Quickly run through the open apps in your docs. I'd actually love to do that. Um, let me do that after I pull in the code here. GitHub.com. Yeah, you can get the Kinesis with the others, but it comes with the Browns um, by default. And I wanted the chill, uh, the more chill ones. It's already so loud that I have to um, mute all the time on calls with clients. Okay, so Daniel Colborn, I believe, was the one who wrote this, and it was basically just the. Um, it was just a little view method to make human time friendly um, using moment from the... Um, well, actually, I don't know if this is going to be what we want, but we're going to try it, and then we're going to see what happens. So let's come back here, and then it's going to be methods. Um, I don't know if this is actually the right way to do it. Um, But let's just try this. So he basically did this. Let's just see how that treats us and then kind of work on it from there. And then I'll work through my doc. Uh, in three hours. <laughs> well, it's doing the job, but we're having some time zone issues, which is fine. I actually don't mind that at all. 
Um, so I think I want that to look a little different. Um, it's probably going to be a span class equals text gray italic. Thank God. And also Dave Tempel, who's on this call, and Adam Weathen and Steve Trevor, who are not on this call, for that. I kind of think I want it to be all lowercase. Let's see if he's up casing it here. Yeah, he's up casing it. So let's drop the start case. And I think I want it to be gray light. Is that gray light? That doesn't look right. Text gray light is not doing anything. Is that because Nova doesn't use the default? Oh man, yeah, I'd forgotten that there was they use this number system instead of the defaults. Yep, I really don't like the number system, but I, 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 it will probably grow on me, so I'm going to stop being a grouch because it is much clearer than remembering when you're in light and when you're dark and all that kind of stuff. All right, so there's going to be a time zone thing that we need to finish, but let's pause. Somebody else can be thinking their brain about the time zone while I go through the apps because somebody just asked for it. Uh, Jasper782. Okay, Finder, Siri. Safari, Chrome, which I use for development, Firefox, I use for everything else. Mailmate, I use because I stopped using Gmail for my personal email because it's terrible, so I use Fastmail. Um, Mailplane, which I use for all my Google accounts, Basecamp, App Store, BusyCal, um, iTerm2, SQL Pro for databases. Um, this is using a customized version of Tailwind. Um, oh, okay, nice, David. Uh, Sublime Text, PHP Storm, which I intend to use and never actually use. Uh, MacVim, I tend to use Vim bindings in Sublime Text more than I use MacVim, but sometimes I use it. Um, the GitHub Desktop, which is a really great UI for Git, and I use it anytime I need to do something that I have a really convenient um, thing for uh, in my normal Git command line repertoire. Spotify, iTunes, Tidal, which I'm doing a trial of and I'm going to delete as soon as the, title, the thing's over. Telegram, uh, old Tweetbot, new Tweetbot. RIP for both of them. I'm going to have to switch to Twitter because they are jerks. Uh, messages, Slack, things, best task management ever. Um, Bear, the best note taking ever. Deliveries, tracks all your UPS and USPS deliveries and stuff like that. Trello, Postman for a REST client, and then OBS, which I'm using for streaming. Yeah, I said I didn't like it at first, but I actually do think I like these numbers. Um, they're actually kind of nice. They're much easier to know how far am I up and down the stack and all that kind of stuff. So, okay. So we've got a time zone issue. Does anybody know the best way to handle time zones with Moment.js? Wait, so what What cl Twitter client, do they want us to use the Twitter website because they're awful? I don't, I really am mad if that's the case. All right, so Moment.js time zones. Um, I've never actually felt like I had to do it, so I'm curious. Thank you. This mic and video are both the Logitech something. <laughs> uh, let me see what it is. Logitech uh, C930E. Um, C930E. Moment oh, time zones are separate. That's what I thought. I thought it's a whole different beast. So why is it that we're getting Let's see what those strings are looking like when we're not moment, moment applying. Um, real twitter.com forward to switch real dummy friend. <laughs> nice. Um, exactly. I don't want to spend my whole day on time zone issues. I'm trying to figure out if there's a nice little kind of convenient way around it. Also, did I mention that it's really, really hot? Because it's really, really hot. Ugh. All right. Affiliate links. Bam. Yeah, I just don't want to use a web app. I would like to use a real desktop application. I love TweetBot, but everything is super, super slow. OK. Are you getting UTC times? Yeah, so I was just going to check, because I think I'm probably getting UTC times. Um, OK. All right, we're going back here. We're looking at it. Um, so it is two hours from now. I'm sure it's UTC because I'm minus five. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> 15 minute warning for my meeting. Thanks, Jake. Oof. So I feel like Moment should have a really way to the easy way to detect the current user's time zone and then compare it against UTC. Is that 
it's because it's detecting my time zone now or it wouldn't know. So I feel like there's got to be a simple way to just say, um, you know, parse it assuming is, oh, I have a fan, but it's going to be, actually, you all can tell me. I assume that this is way too loud. Um, yeah, it literally doesn't even have the word time zone anywhere here. Too hot. Figured. That was a nice little 30 seconds of being cool again, though. Moment.utc input. All right, we'll try that. That's okay. That's okay. I'm almost done. Someone's saying moment.utc. So let's just try that. Several people are saying that. Who cares? You need the fan. <laughs> Thank you, Dave Hicking. I'll be okay. Uh, oh, except I'm returning string. An hour ago. Hey! Hey, hey, hey! Thank you, all the people who suggested that. Daytime field view existing. Oh, hey, look at that. That's cool. Uh, but this seems to be working fine now. An hour ago, an hour ago, four hours ago. Cool. All right, so we've got those. So let's. Um, I can't show you my GitHub desktop view because it'll show you all the projects I'm working on, unfortunately. Um, I was going to show you that that's how I normally figure these things out. All right, so. Um, okay, so all we did here was we fixed the letting and then we um, Okay. Thanks, Brocard Jr. All right, so what was the other thing we're gonna do? We're gonna fix the data here, which requires me to do work on the API, we're going to fix the um, the link, which requires me to do work on the API. And maybe the last thing I was going to do was just um, later we'll be able to show other stuff um, like number of downloads and all that kind of stuff. I don't think that comes back from the API right now. Although, let's go take a look. Um, very recent. See what we get back from those. Uh, poor postman. Okay. So we get the abstract, we get descriptions. I mean, we could like make a little pop up showing more information about it, but again, Marcel's doing a really robust thing there, so I don't want to overlap with what he's doing too much. Download count. That could be interesting. I want to know something about its popularity, and we don't pull that from GitHub yet, like number of stars and stuff. We have ratings um, in our app, but we don't currently expose that through the API. So I probably need to add ratings to the API too. I'm just worried that like if I get started on building the whole tab switcher, um, then we're gonna lose all of our time. Let's just try it. I, if anyone who wasn't here yesterday, I mentioned that I just I don't write much front end these days, and especially I'm not very good at Vue. So most people who are listening are better Vue developers than me at this point. Let's just let's just do it and see where it takes us. See how far I can make it in 11 minutes. So my concept with like a tab switch is really just like you've got two tabs up top, one that says recent and one that says popular. Um, I feels like a component is overkill, but let me go take a look at. Probably some slots. You can see a demo here. Okay. I, I feel like it's overkill um, from a programming perspective, but from a design perspective, I might be happy for it. Um, I'm loath to add a. Um, yeah. What the heck? Let's just pull it in. Um, I just, it's, I don't need a tabs component, and especially knowing that we have this such such a small space, I'm very wary that it's going to be more time modifying that component than just building a really, really rudimentary one. I'm not going to use it, um, and you can all judge me. Uh, you can all judge me later. Okay, so tab by default is going to be recent. Um, so that's our initial 
and then there's basically going to be like a we're going to have two tabs. Um, and so right now we'll make the tabs literally just divs. They won't even have any styles. Um, and so this one is going to be. Um, Sorry, y'all. Like I said, this keyboard, I'm still slow with it. It's been almost a year. Um, div if um, tab, I think I named it. I think that's going to be the best way to do it. It's probably not BF, but be show, right? And this would be popular, and then I should probably have a clothing quote there, um, which is now getting the. the um, that song popular from Wicked stuck in my head now. Uh, can you combine Nova? Oh, you guys can check. Cool, cool. Um, and then we've got our links. in view land. This is a click handler. Then we make a method called select tab. And all select tab is going to do is um, this tab equals tab. I think that's it. And then we could also do how do you do that? I'm trying to remember how to do the class binding. I have the React way stuck in my head right now. Um, um, we say like class, no, class equals the whole conditional thing. Um, so interestingly, David, I think his question was less about can you put more than one in one package, but more can one package require another? So let's say I made a field type. Can another package include that field type? And my guess is the answer is yes, but I'm curious to hear what you say. I think this is how it works. So let's just try it like um, bold true. My guess is this is going to be something like this. Let's just try that. So in theoretically, this is true, and so recent should be bold. Let's just see. Class equals class name condition. Perfect. Exactly what I did. Thank you so much, Zach Smash. All right. Uh, didn't work. <laughs> it's probably font bold uh, or text bold. Sometimes the tail one, I have a lot of trouble figuring that out. Okay, there you go. Great. So this is going to be basically this, or tab equals recent. And then this is going to be the same thing. But it's going to be uh, tab equals popular. Popular. Bam, tab switcher, done. <laughs> See, that's why I was like, I just like, I just, it's not worth it. Uh, this does just expose the fact that we probably have to have a specific number and then we can set the height on this thing. Um, uh, so I think we're going to use, I'm trying to remember what the height classes are, but I think it's something like that. Um, okay, that didn't work. Let's go see what that's going to be. Six minutes. I thought tailwind height is applied by h dash number. And I thought that maybe 16 is too big. I always forget which um, which size each of them uses. We're looking for our card class, we should card, h16. So apparently h16 is not it. Let's talk about h8. OK, so we just got to go to tailwind.js and see what heights we have available to us. We, don't, we might not actually have one that is useful. Um, 8, 9, 12, and then these are all commented out. Five minute warning. Thanks, Jake. So let's just pull these in. I don't know why they're commented out, so let's uncomment them. I might have to NPM run dev on the, the high level one, but let's. Oh, but the problem with that is that means that we can't use that because uh, we need to be able to use this on our, um, our own styles here. And I bet you we don't have the ability to use stuff like that here. This sucks. Um, can start using the CLS section. I assume it's not here that you're talking about, but no, so it must be something up here. I remember um, Caleb saying something about that, but I did not um, 
I don't remember where it was. Um, so we're just going to go back. Um, we don't have much time. So we're just going to switch over to this. Um, we're going to say dot. Um, so the problem is if I add my own H16, then I'm adding a utility class and a component. But what if somebody else has an H16 in their Nova app uh, that is not the same? Because if you look at this, like my Nova app right here has its own um, tailwind.js. But there's no tailwind.js on this package. And so I don't want to like get in the way of somebody else's Nova or someone else's Tailwind components. So I'm just for now, and somebody can tell me if I did this wrong, I'm just going to call it Nova package discovery card. Um, and then unless, unless this is scoped, uh, if this is scoped, then I don't have to worry about that so much. I'd rather put it down here because it'd be scoped, but I'm just trying to kind of like follow what's being in suggested to me. So I'm just going to try this and then, uh, David can tell me if this is not what he expected. So we're going to do something like this, like height, you know, 10 M's or something like that. Let's just, let's just see what happens when we do that. I know I can do a style scope, thank you. I'm just trying to do it like the Nova E way. And so the fact that it comes with a card.scss file makes me feel like I'm supposed to. I'd much rather do this, um, do it scoped. <laughs> I, it's all about doing what I'm supposed to do, you know what I mean? Like style scoped, um, but that's okay. Um, start tools and all that. All right, well, then I'm gonna, I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna, I'm gonna run with this sucker. So first of all, let's keep it with this name and see if it works. And then second of all, we can name it to something simpler. Okay, it looks like it's working. So now we can actually just modify the card class entirely because it's scoped. I think that's working. So obviously that's more, we want a little bit bigger. And I'm not sure exactly how much I'm going to trim it to. Right now, let's just trim it to the content we actually have in it. And then later we'll work on getting that design actually working correctly. All right, so that's good enough for now, and then popular will have a bunch of white space. Okay, so it doesn't look right, but we have fully functioning. Oh, also, what is the um, the uh, ignore prevent default? Isn't there a shortcut for that in view? Um, I'll let y'all answer rather than me googling because I've got two minutes. So we've got the ability to switch between recent packages and popular packages. It's functioning. The design needs work, um, but like it's there. And so I think next steps at click.front. Thank you. The next steps for this probably would be around me getting all the rest of this data working so that we can finalize the actual data and then getting some kind of clearer, simpler, smaller design. And then I kind of think it works and it's off to build one of the 25 other um, packages that I have ideas for. So let's do a click.prevent and then let's publish it up and then I got to go. All right, so let's click on these. And then, hi, can I use Nova? Uh, if, you're not, if you're joking, you're funny. And if you're not joking, uh, shoot me, please. Um. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. So, what did we do today? Get uh, diff. I don't want the diff of these though. Tab recent. So we had the tabs for popular versus recent packages. Do we do anything else? Do we do the the dates in this one? Oh, freaking. I, I would normally be doing this diff check in the GitHub app, but um, I'm trying not to expose all my secrets to you guys. Okay, I'm just going to assume that we didn't. Um, so uh, add tabs. Uh, even better, I'm just going to pause it and then go check. So the worst thing is I look over when I'm pausing it and I see my posture and then I'm like, oh gosh. <sighs> All right, GitHub add local repository. GitHub add local repository. Thank you. And then we're going to add another package discovery. And now I believe I can show it to you without you seeing all my others. Hopefully. All right, so what we see is in our card.view, we added the tabs and we didn't do the human time. So the human time is already there. And then what you can do is you can say here it's basically added um, tabs for recent and popular. So it's not added, it's add. All right, and then we push that up. All right. Uh, oh, lack, I could have just checked the last commit message. You were right, Vince, that is definitely something I could have done. Uh, Uchi ha ha ha, Tachi, um, because you haven't answered yet. If you're being serious, um, sure, an app is an app is an app is an app. Um, I, 
I didn't see anything in the license. Um, I would check the license, not me. I'm not a legal professional. Um, the reason I thought you might be joking is because can it be can it be done multi-tenant is the, the joke of every um, stream and chat and everything like that. Um, but yeah, so it is 11 o'clock, time for our next meeting. So let's just do a real quick um, Nova package discovery release. Uh, I'm just going to keep going. Oh, so because of the fact that it, it scopes it more, I'm actually going to go um, 0.3.1. Actually, no, I'm going to do 0.4. And then from there forward, I'm going to do 0.4.0. .0. And from there forward, I'm going to go up just the small ones because it seems that I, the default composer require pulls it in a much greater level of specificity under version 1. And I had forgotten about that. Hopefully this doesn't break things, and this is going to be tabs for recent and popular. All right, so we've got a VO.4.0, and then closer update. Oh, it won't work because I have it. Okay, but yeah, there you go. Um, so that's it. Um, oh, you know what else I was going to do real quick? I was going to add a picture to our um, Nova Packages entry. <laughs> Freaking janky and huge this is. Um, so I'll go do that right when we get off this call. Um, thank you everyone for coming and hanging out, and hopefully we'll do this again soon. Oh, matches. Thank you. The